Body bags will horrorize. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Body Bags. It's week 196, and I'm your Sunday host, DBougie86 here. Yes, guys, as you know, it's our special theme week this week, and it's the Video Nasties Week. Yes, the Video Nasties. Interesting subject. If you haven't checked out the two uh, documentaries on the Video Nasties, Volume 1, which goes into the Section 1 and 2 list, and Volume 2, which goes into the Section 3 list, very interesting stuff and very in-depth, like, especially once they go through like all the trailers for the Video Nasties and you learn what films are on them. And... Uh, they go through the trailers and you have like discussions about it. Really interesting stuff. I highly recommend those if you want to know more about the video nasties and what they were. But I'm reviewing a video nasty today and actually very interesting enough. If you haven't watched our uh, Saturday reviewers review, Andrew, he actually did uh, a film from the same director. Yes, yes. So this is not only video nasties week on body bags it's also jess franco weekend on body bags <laughs> yes and the film i chose is a film from 1980 and it goes by the title of devil hunter yes this was released by severin films uh they released this two ways actually they released this on dvd which you get by itself but you could also get in like this nice uh box set known as the cannibal massacre collection and they also released it on Blu-ray in a double feature with uh, Cannibal Terror, which I also think is a video nasty. So, uh, two ways you get this film in the States anyways. I don't know about like any other countries. But yeah, this was a video nasty band on the video nasties list. I believe this was on the prosecutor list. Uh, pretty much uh, the main plot of this one, it's kind of like a ransom and kidnap film when it begins with like... Uh, this, uh, I'm going to believe she's like a model or star, uh, the way her character is. And, uh, she's actually in like this tropical setting to do like a location scouting for her next shoot. And, uh, pretty much what ends up happening, she ends up getting kidnapped by these goons who hold her for ransom. And her company that she works for actually hires this guy named Peter, who's played by Al Cliver. If you don't know who Al Cliver is, of course, he's starting my favorite horror film of all time, Zombie. And pretty much Peter's uh, leads him to where he has to find this girl and do the ransom switch or try to get out of there in time and try to get the money too at the same time. But pretty much uh, what ends up happening is uh, these two uh, parties cross path, Peter's party of him and his friend and this party of kidnappers. But unbeknownst to them, there's actually like this tribe that lives near where they're meeting and they worship this god who's like uh this cannibal that they sacrifice women to and they hear like this commotion and know something's up so they awaken their god to do men with what's bothering their nature pretty much and he this god takes out the parties one by one and it's up to them to try to survive this thing that is pretty much the main plot of this one without going into it now, my thoughts on this film, uh, I gotta say, uh, if you watch the interview with Jess Franco on this film, uh, you could tell he wasn't a fan of cannibal films, because uh, he even says that right out in the public that he's not a fan of cannibal films in the interview and in this uh, release, and you could see that with the, this type of film, because he tries to take like a different approach to a, a typical cannibal film in a way, because... Uh, pretty much what happens is uh, they have like this ransom and stuff and like this girl being held up and Instead of like the whole tribe being cannibals There's only one cannibal in the film and it kind of plays out like a slasher in a way because this cannibal is picking them off one by one and very uh, different cheesy ways of course I'll get more into him later, but uh there's a serious character development issues that I did have with this film, especially with, like, uh, the main girl on the cover here, uh, Ursula Fellner, I believe that's her name. Uh, just the things that go on with her in the film doesn't match, like, uh, the way her character ends up, because it's just the things that hectic craziness things that happen to her in the film 
should be shocking and inflict her and kind of leave her with emotional grip. But it doesn't happen in this film. It's kind of like a different feeling, especially the way she reacts in certain scenes. And I'm not going to give those scenes away because that would be a spoiler. But it doesn't go well with her character, is all I'm saying, especially with the reactions that her character and the mindset of her character, what happens to her in the film, kind of don't make sense. Now, I did like... Uh, some of the characters and goofiness of this film, there's like one scene in particular where I died out of laughing, where one of the kidnappers like is jumping over like this leaf thing, and it's fucking hilarious. This the jump and the sound he makes is the fucking funniest thing I ever saw in film. I was just dying laughing. Uh, but yeah, there's some cool kills and stuff in this film. The gore is pretty good for like a cannibal film. Uh, not a lot of like cannibal munching, unfortunately though. It's like some quick away like gore and stuff. But there is some, like, scenes of gore in this film. I did like Al Cliver in this film. I always did like him as an actor in this film. Of course, he starred in numerous films directed by Lucio Fulci. And uh, he actually starred in another uh, cannibal film with Jess Frankel called Cannibals or uh, White Cannibal God or Queen or whatever the hell it's called. I know uh, Blue Underground released that film under Cannibals. But uh, other than that, uh, really interesting thing, but very cheesy. I have to say it's not going to be for everyone because it is like not the greatest film in the world, especially with like the cheese factor in it. But it, it has a lot of like uh, cool things about it and some fucking laugh out moments. I was just dying laughing, like, especially uh, the killer pretty much is like this giant naked black dude. <laughs> yes. And uh, they put like these like egg like shaped eyes on him where bulge out and it. The way I would describe it, kind of in a way, is like uh, he looks like like if you've seen Total Recall before, like when Arnold Schwarzenegger's eyes are about to pop out. It's like that, but they're all glossy white and it has like some blood squirting out of it and shit. It's just like the weirdest fucking thing ever I saw in film, especially when uh, there's like this fight scene involving him in the film. It's fucking like the weirdest and bizarre, but I was laughing the fuck out of it at the same time type deal. So, uh,. But uh, another thing that I did like about that aspect of it, it did have like POV shots of like his POV in the film and it had like a different look to the film instead of like, uh, you know, like a normal POV shot would be. It had like this like glossy finish, which made sense because of the way his eyes were in the film. So I did like that aspect of the film. But overall, not the greatest made film from Jess Franco, I have to say. It was just made to cash in pretty much on the cannibal craze that was happening at that time with like films like Holocaust and Fierox and stuff like that. And you could tell that Jess Franco didn't want to make a cannibal film. But it has some cool like moments in it and a lot of laugh out moments. So I did kind of enjoy it for that moment because it is a bad movie. It's a very like poorly made like bad movie with a director who did not have heart in this film. But there's some fucking funny, entertaining moments in it. Either way, it's still watchable in my opinion. So I'm gonna give it a solid five out of ten. It gets, uh, it's not, it's a terrible made movie, but it's fun that type of deal. So I do kind of recommend it in a way. If you like watching bad movies with your friends and shit, this is one you might throw on, especially if you have like a cannibal night, and you can just laugh at the moments and what's going on on screen. So. Yeah, Devil Hunter, 5 out of 10. Not the best film by Jess Franco by any means, but still entertaining to watch. All right, guys, that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed videos Nasty's week. And as always, I'll see you next week, guys, with some randomness. So I'll see you then. Peace out.